Well, obviously we're thrilled. Uh, it was uh, a great weekend for us. The, the team, you know, did everything that we asked of them uh, and beyond. I thought uh, the guys deserve all the credit for, you know, paying the price, laying it on the line, doing what they had to do to be successful against uh, two good teams. And um, we're just proud to, to be able to raise another banner at the uh, Compton Center. So I'm, I'm happy for these guys. And, you know, these guys here, uh, you can ask them how they're feeling. So. Austin, can you take us through the goal that you scored, please? Yeah, uh, TJ Tynan got a, the puck at the, and just inside the blue line off a turnover and passed it down to Lucia, and it hit off Lucia's skate, and he deflected it to me, and I had an open net, and I just put it away. Anders, how much was ending Michigan season on, on your mind today? Uh, yeah, you know, they, uh, they obviously had to win the tournament to continue their season, and uh, for us to do that, it's very difficult. Anytime you're trying to, you know, take someone out of their season, it's going to be hard. And they put up an absolute fight. They were resilient all game, um, especially in that first period. Um, so I gave a lot of credit to them. They played a great game, and, and uh, hats off to their, their final run. Anders, both Ohio and Michigan back here had some trouble getting shots you know, in both games this week, and you guys were able to keep them away from that for the most part. What were you guys doing that, that led to that success? You know, we controlled the puck a lot. Um, you know, we were quick up in the puck in the neutral zone. We had control. We were the ones that were dictating the play. And uh, when we were able to do that, it get, takes away from them to have opportunities with the puck, to have odd man rushes and, and so forth. So for, our, for us to have that ability and for us to play that way, it was obviously a huge reason why we succeeded. Anders, on, um, on that first goal, um, you described the feeling of, of relief. It seemed like no matter what you were throwing at Racine, he just had an answer. What was it like to, to get that in? Yeah, he was a wall uh, at the beginning of the game and pretty much all tournament. Uh, so for us to get that first one was just, it was a relief. Uh, get us on the board, tie up the game, and, and just kind of give the, the, some confidence to the boys because you know we were pumping shots left and right. And for us to finally get one uh, was definitely a huge break for us. TJ, at the end of that first period, you guys controlled most of it as far as shots and that type of thing, and then they get that one with a minute left. What was the conversation to, to keep you guys from getting deflated when you go into the locker room between periods? Um, obviously, that was a bad goal to give up, but um, I mean, the same thing happened yesterday. Uh, we were down a goal, and we know what we're capable of, and uh, we just came back harder. I thought I thought we had a, a ton of chances um, all game long, and uh, Anders put it in. You know he's going to, so uh, it was good we got that goal. Coach, I, we've talked a lot in the last couple of weeks about the end of this conference, but now that you've capped it with a championship, what are, I guess, some of the emotions that you felt right afterwards? Well, I mean, this one's extra special to me because the first team I ever coached uh, as a head coach in college hockey in 1991 won this tournament, and this would be the last opportunity to win one of these tournaments. And I've said many times over the last, uh, you know, couple months when people ask me is that uh, there was a day that this thing meant more than being in the NCAA tournament. I mean, it was a jam-packed jam house all the time. Uh, it was an exciting place to come. It was, you know, everybody looked forward to going to the Joe, and the NCAA tournament was just kind of, you know, gravy. Um, but unfortunately, we've become more about, uh, you know, like basketball, where the NCAA tournament's the only thing that matters. And obviously, we all want to play in, for a national championship, but winning a conference championship is, should be special. And, um, you know, I think that the CCHA has done a great job in, in making this event special. You know, it's been a hard draw over recent years for whatever reasons. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a great venue for college hockey. It's a great city for college hockey. And uh, I know that they'll probably continue with the Big Ten. But uh, it'll be disappointing to, to not be able to come back here in the future. Um, for any of the players, um, how much special that this is the last CCHA champion Ship for you guys and that you guys want it? Uh, it's pretty special. Uh, for everyone in the locker room, that's our, it's our first one. Um, first opportunity for us to, to raise a banner. And, um, you know, we, we played hard and we played well and we stuck together as a team. And that's kind of been uh, the reason why we're, we were in this game today because, you know, we faced a six game losing streak in the middle of the second season. But we were so close in the locker room that, uh, you know, that wasn't going to get to our heads, get it to our team. So, uh, for us to go out there and, and win the last CCHA tournament is uh, very special for us and something we'll never forget. Jeff, uh, Joe Lewis is notorious for its, I guess, active 
boards, and that's how you guys got that first goal, the slap shot wide by Steven. Um, was that something you and your coaching staff emphasized a lot heading into this weekend, getting um, those shots wide? You know, uh, well, we worked on it more when we got here. In fact, our whole practice on Friday was all board work, you know, because w w Coach Pooley and myself, we've been here for a number of years, so we know, you know, how the boards are lively. We're having our D work on it. We're having our forwards work on the cycle low. I mean, everything we did was basically board related because they, they do have lively boards. And hey, it's just part of the game. You try to take advantage of the opportunity or the environment that you play in. Jeff, you almost ended up playing Michigan in the quarterfinals. Were you relieved then that you avoided playing them? No, privately, yes. I mean, uh, I was saying, you know, when we beat Bowling Green the last regular season game uh, to finish in second place, you know, we weren't going to certainly hold back from trying to finish in second. And, and it worked out to our favor because I mean, obviously, Western Michigan is a great team that had to go into a, a situation playing a, a team that was uh, on a roll. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was hoping to, if we were going to have to play Michigan, that it was going to be the last opportunity to do so. When you do run in a team like that that's won eight or nine in a row, what do you have to do to sort of stop their momentum right away? Well, we just have to play our game. I mean, it's a matter of being poised and patient. And you play a great team, I and mean, they have great speed and, and great skill. And you have to play smart. And if you play smart with the puck, um, you know, and you play as a team and, and you, you work hard and play with discipline, you're going to have success. And, you know, I just I had confidence in our guys going into the weekend, the way we've been playing. And, um, you know, they've answered every challenge so far here in, in the last month or so. so you know, I'm proud of what they accomplished, and you know, they deserve all the credit because they have to do the work. This question's for any of you guys. You guys hit a bit of a rough patch in the middle of the season. How are you guys able to overcome that, win a Mason Cup, and what does it say about the team? Um, I mean, uh, we suffered a, a similar stretch last year that we couldn't quite get out of, um, but this year we got out of it. And, uh, I mean, we just kept working hard. We had some injuries. We had some bad bounces. But... Uh, I mean, to come back like we did and have a run like this and win the last RCCJ playoff championship, it's obviously very special to all of us. And uh, that's what we've been working on uh, ever since last year, ever since we had that disappointing year. Uh, we were looking to hang banners and uh, make memories um, here in Notre Dame, and that's what we did here today. Jeff, do you feel like this team's playing like a NCAA number one seed right now? Um, I don't really want to get into that. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> college hockey's so close. I mean, if anybody's been paying attention over the last couple of weeks, it's like uh, we, we were out of the tournament a couple of days ago. So, you know, uh, whether the system is good or bad, I can't tell you. I mean, you know, there's probably a, a number of teams that, uh, that could be in the NCAA tournament that are just as good as the teams that are there. And I think the same thing applies with the seeding. You know, there's a lot of teams that you know, could be number one seeds. So, you know, I'm not concerned about it right now. All we have to do is enjoy this for 24 hours and then move forward to uh, wherever we may go. Coach, how much has Steven Summerhays meant to this run you guys are on right now? Well, obviously, I mean, your goaltender makes a big, big difference. I mean, he didn't have a lot of work in either game early on. And, I, you know, I, I'd rather maybe get some shots early on so he gets some gets into his comfort zone, but um, he made some great saves when we needed him in the end, and, and that's what you need to win a championship is you got to have a goalie that can make that save when the game's on the line. I told our guys before the game, it's, a, you know, being, being a great athlete or a great team is about making big plays at big moments, and, and I thought he did that a couple times in the third period tonight. All right, thank you. Oh!